and I'll make it available. I'll put it on YouTube and link it uh, tomorrow. So does anyone have does, uh, so remember, you guys, you have a uh, homework coming up to in 10 days. Uh, so does anyone have any questions on the homework or, or where they'd like to start? Oh, reminder, okay, question 14 has been asked. Uh, if anyone needs a Discord link, by the way, I don't think you need that one. I will send out another copy real quick. So we have number three, number 14. Paste, for some reason it's not letting me copy. Paste. So if anyone needs to join the Discord still, I just resent the link. So let's see number three and number 14. <clears throat> Fifteen and twenty-eight. Oh, so the idea of significance. Okay, so the first one is number four. Is the idea of statistical significance. Um. Let me babies. So <clears throat> on this one, let me go ahead and share a white screen, whiteboard. So we are talking about the difference between a statistical significance and a practical. So statistical significance is we have done math and tests, and we know that there is a difference. A practical one is, does it matter? Does it have any difference at all? So this is, I hate to say it, everyone loves these. If you remember these guys, it's a Venn diagram. You can have statistically different, significant, you have practically different, and you can have both. Those are all outcomes on these, unfortunately. So. Uh, if does anyone remember what these guys are called? Does anyone remember seeing these guys? Mm, no, since we had that huge thing, these are called Venn diagrams. And it's a way, and when I think we talk about Bayesian statistics in this class, I'm not sure. <clears throat> it's a way to see how things relate to each other. So on this, the homework question is specifically, um, uh, 
you can okay so if it's So, uh, baby is born female. If the method has no effect, the method. Uh, so on this one, if there's really no effect for the treatment, it could have, on this case, no statistical, but it could have a actual practical. There is a difference and it could raise the chances of you having it, but it's not enough to be sure that's going to happen. So for instance, in this case, it's, it's talking about having uh, babies and you really, really want a female. So if you do this, is it going to almost guarantee you, this is basically almost guarantee a difference. Really? So this is going to guarantee, almost guarantee you that there's going to be a difference if you use this. It's going to happen. This is number four, I think, is what people... Number three. <clears throat> so if there's almost a, you know, a guarantee that it's going to happen, it happens in like 90, 95% of the people, or it's something that always will happen, then it's just significant. Well, a practical one would be for instance is we'll make a difference we'll usually make a difference but has over but may have overlap my z my y just went to nothing So uh, an example of this one, uh, I don't know if anyone knows anything about herbal remedies, but um, this could actually help if you don't have the money to go to, I don't know, a doctor at the time. Uh, garlic has a lot of anti-everything properties. So applying it, there has been no studies that show it working because of this how stringent they are but in practice it tends to work it reduces bacteria infection Uh, I know this because I've actually used this on my wife. She got bit by our little Shih Tzu dog and her hand just started swelling up. So I just do a, if anybody wants to know, you just do a compress, put it on it for as long as you can stand and like swelling just disappears. It's kind of amazing. So that is the difference between practical and statistical. Practical is, will it have an application? Uh, even this aside, I will upload these by the, when we're done, by the way. These are good notes, but remember these are my notes and they're terrible because I can't write to save my life. Um, let me save them though. <clears throat> so another good way to do it is practical. You can use. Statistical, maybe. So a statistical amount of difference may not actually be any practicality at all. Um, so just because something is statistically different doesn't mean it makes a bit of difference. Um, so for instance, pay. If I have a test that says, um, I 
I just taught engineers this morning that a mechanical engineer uh, versus an electrical engineer salary is uh, salary is different is uh, statistically it's different. But the salary for mechanical engineer is, let's say, $98,000 a year versus a electrical engineer making $100,000 a year. Does it really truly matter? Does $2,000 a year matter? at that point, right? I mean, yes, it is nice to have that extra bit of money, but in the grand scheme of things, even though it's statistically significant, it's not practically different. And that's kind of what they're trying to get home. You can have a difference mathematically, but it doesn't actually make a difference. I'm trying to make sure I have everything. 1528. So is that clear? Or as I like to say, or my teacher used to say, clear as mud. Clear, but kind of fuzzy. So we are going to go on. The next one we're going to do, and I will label them from now on, is we're going to look at 14. I just I hate it when they change things and not for the better. Oh, I can just do that. So let me go ahead and save, clear. The number 14. Okay, so we're actually going to do this one in Excel. I don't have Excel installed, so let me do. Um, mm, do -do. Okay, so we're going to do this in the spreadsheet. I don't yet have um, Google slide or um, Microsoft Office installed yet, so we're going to do it this way. So it is asking to do um, using data, which I will not use this data, but I'll use something similar. It's asking you to set up a distribution based on a class width of point two volts and it's asking that it has a normal distribution so we would have let's say i have similar question so i'd have i'd set it up with voltage and then this says frequency i do count because i don't like confusing myself uh so i like to do when i'm doing these upper and lower so if i have in this case if it was 190 119.2, so I would do uh, cut paste. This is lower end, this is upper end. So it's asking for a class width of 0.2 volts. What a class width is, is how big each bin is so a bin is each individual entry each line on the spreadsheet so in this case we had to have 119 point 
four. So if I was doing it with my own data, I would do, let's do 110.02. So you want to make sure when you do this that you go up by one between each bin. So between here and here is you want to include 0.2. Actually on this one, it'd be 10.2. And this is 110.4. <coughs> You can also have Excel do this for you. So what I could do is I can do equals sign and then choose my upper cell, the actual cell, and it would copy that cell. I could also do bin width and then put my bin width there, 0 0.2. Then I can go to this point right here and do equals my lower plus my bin. And then it would put it there. Then I could copy this as high as I want. And then copy this the same amount. And what did it do wrong? That's right. Why is this? Oh, I see. When you do this, a very important thing to do is put dollar signs around a value that doesn't move, which I did not do, so it errored. And once you do that, everything will go up. <coughs> at that point, what I want to do is over here, I actually have data and I can go through and look at it. I want to count each time a value comes up. So on this case, I'm going to make up numbers. Uh, see, they have how many days? 25. And two, one, 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 point six. So we had 25, so we'd have day one. This is just me making data. It's doing that. That's annoying. One, one, one. You doing that? I will cheat. So I basically just cheated and had it put everything as there. So what I want to do at this point is I have to see where 110.3 would fit. So I do it right here and I put in one. Oh, I forgot, I have to do this. <coughs> Pay special values only. So on this, I just redid this all. If I had to go to 111.6, I put one here. I would, so this one's done. I go to the second one. One 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 three. So I put one here, and I just go through the entire list and fit things where they go. One 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 three is here. One 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 zero is here. One 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 five. Two, three, two, four. And you would do this with your own data. One, 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 zero.
it's up there. So on ones like this, where you actually have <coughs> it between two, you want to make sure you put it in the previous one. So you want to put it this because this goes up to two. So this is 110 to 110.2. This is over 110.2 up to 0.4. So this is the slow, annoying manual way to do this. One, 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 three. Zero eight. Three, five, seven, one. Three. So those are our data. A couple of other couple of things you could have done is you could have sorted the data based on column G, and it would have gone high to low, or low to high. You could have also uh, done this. If you insert a chart, long chart. Let me actually get rid of this. I don't need that right now. So if I would have just highlighted all my data in here and insert a chart, and you could have done it's called a histogram. They're in here. Why do I have one? Oh. And you could actually set your bucket size. So we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight buckets. Well, that's five. Uh, but if you go up to 10, why is it? Oh, I got to do it. You could actually set your margins here and you would have 0. 0.2. <clears throat> An idea of your distribution, which is what I was about to do. And this will tell you essentially if it is normal or not. If it's normal, it will look like this. So uh, you are supposed to just draw a line over it like this. That's why I did badly. Uh, but a normal distribution is supposed to look like that. So you make your decision, does this look normal based on how you have things put out here? Uh, another way you could do that really quick, Close this out is if you do really uh, uh, let me actually close all this, move all this stuff over. Two, three, four, five, two, one, one, two, three, five. You could just kind of draw these with X's and you get the same thing that they do. And you can see if it is normal, if it follows kind of a bell curve or not. And if it doesn't, then you know the answer to that is no. Which it doesn't really. 
So that's 14. Mm, where's my annotation stuff? Clear. So the next one would be 15. Oh, a relative um, includes relative frequency based on the frequency distribution. So below, they compare the rates. Oh, comparing two frequencies. So this one, let's see, rename. So if we want them to do two distributions, so in this case we had they were using um, tar in milligrams for filtered versus unfiltered. So we're going to use something similar, but I'm going to make up random numbers. So we have five. So we have tar, filtered, non filtered. So we have five to nine, 10 to 14, 15 to 19. Why did that go right? Uh, 20 to 24, 25 to 29. 30 to 34, 35 to 39. And we have 22, wait, what, 14, 16, 25 of each of filtered and non-filtered. So once again, I'm gonna create 25 entries. And then I'd have Play, pay special values only. Then filtered would be equals ran between. Just making up data. That's all I'm doing with ran between, by the way. Five and 24. Pay special values only. So at this point, if I'm doing this, I probably would go ahead and click on data and sort range to make your life easier. So we would have in here between five and nine, Four. Uh, sorry, five, six. Oh, so apparently I was wrong. And if a teacher ever tells you they're never wrong, they lie. So this should actually be 110.3, 110.5. So this should be plus 0.1. There you go. So you should change that to this right here. And which, once again, I will go ahead and 
share this and when I'm done, so you have a copy of this. <clears throat> so you want to fit these once again on everything that will fit in here. So one, two, three, four, five into this one. 15 to 19. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight into there. 20 to 24. One, two, three, four, five, six. In the filtered, we'd have uh, 15 is the lowest, so that would be over here. So 15 to 19, one, two, three, four, four. 20 to 24, one, two, three, four, five, six, six there. 25 to 29, one, two, three, four, five there. 30 to 34, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then one, two, three below. I have everything into there. Um, now yet the question itself will ask for percentage, cumulative, uh, let's see, we're doing two, 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 two. relative frequency. So in this, you have two different things. You will have relative frequency, which is the frequency at one point. And then you have cumulative frequency, which is a frequency at that point and all before it. So I'll go ahead and calculate uh, both of these just because I'll show you how to do it in one. Uh, so no matter what you're doing, you can do it. So percentage relative uh, filtered, percentage relative non-filtered. Then we have percentage cumulative filtered, percentage cumulative non-filtered. And one will lead to the other. That's another reason I don't, in general, I don't like to make more work for myself than I have to. <coughs> so the first thing we need to do is find the sum. In Excel, you can use sum open parentheses, and then select a range of values in order to get your total number. We need this for both of them. So we have 25 filtered and 25 non-filtered. So the easiest way to do this is to do the equation once and never have to do it again. So at this point, I hit equals and then Frequency or find a percentage, it's nothing more than the number divided by the total. So I want to hit for the filter, the cell for five to nine, which has nothing in it. So Excel treats that as a zero. And then I want to divide by the cell B9. Um, so what I want to do in here is I had to hit dollar sign and dollar sign around in front of the B and the nine, so that doesn't change. And that gives us this. I uh, double click and actually, I don't know. I don't need to double click. I need to click on the top and drag all the way to cell D8 and it calculates this. <clears throat> Note this calculates this as a decimal in order to get it to be the answer you want because they are asking for it in percentages you need to you can either times it by 100 or you can go into see it's in here somewhere i know in excel you go in and you hit uh, format cells but in here in uh, sheets you go into number and you go down to percent and it calculates it as a percent. 
So for the relative non-filtered, it's the same thing. So I choose the cell, C2, I divide, and then I choose the sum, C9. And it will actually try and uh, do this. You don't want the autofill. You want to go back in and do the dollar sign in front of C and dollar sign in front of nine. Uh, copy these all the way down. <clears throat> and then you want to go in once again, format, number, and percent. So cumulative, like I said, was the cell you're in plus anything previous. So in the first one, it will just be the cell you're in. So relative filtered. For the one, for the next one, you want to take this value here, D3, and you want to add your previous value, which is in this case, F2. Once I have that done for the second one, I can copy this all the way down to the bottom. If you haven't made any errors, the last one will be 100%. And then what you can do for this one, once you have it calculated, is you can copy it because it's looking at, this was looking at this range of cells. This is looking at, this is looking at this range of cells. Since you're doing the same math right next to it, you can just highlight everything. On the very bottom, you have this little uh, square. You click over it, you get the little highlight thing. You can click it and go to the right and it should copy everything over. Frequency polygon. What's a frequency polygon? Sorry, I'm giving you something completely different or whatever they want to talk about. Oh, number 22, okay. I will add that to the list in order through the class. So that was number 14. Uh, number 15, oh, actually that is number 15, sorry. So that would be the next question. Uh -huh. So what in the world is a frequency polygon? Or did they just choose new words for something I already know? Oh, these guys. So what they're trying to do is this guy. Uh, so if I insert chart and I do this as a line graph, why did, oh, get rid of you. chart except I had to put in zeros that is what they're doing so if you have it set up and this like I said this is an excel you would just do I can even do it for both of them chart that would be what they're wanting uh, except if you notice in the homework let me pull it up <coughs> they all go to zero actually they go to negative one for some reason so on ones like this you would look at the frequency so it'd be 26 so it'd be pretty high at the beginning so in this case you can Kind of eliminate these two guys so it leaves these two uh so it was 26 16 so that is 5 10 15 20 25 30 so these are ticks of five so this one is about 20 that one's about 12 this was 26 and just over half so it'd be something like this if i were to do that but if you have a question about it i uh, this kind of spreadsheet would do the same thing you can copy all this data over. You can actually open it in Excel or copy to clipboard.
The good thing about this is you can copy the clipboard, and then insert, chart, and it does a line chart. So that is what you're looking for right there. Something close to that. You can see they had negative one at zero. So if you wanted to, negative one, zero. <coughs> and that would be how I would solve those. Let me rename this. And then there you go. This would be what do I want to call this? Nine, nine. So that was twenty two, twenty eight. So brain volumes and I, oh, jeez. You're already doing interpretation. Oh, jeez, this is annoying. Okay. Okay, let me start not annotate. New share whiteboard share. This is 28 clear. So this is number 28. P values. And st stats tests. Congratulations, you're about to enter my first rant. Sorry. So statistical tests are ways that we can determine whether or not things are significantly different or not. Um, so in general, we have thresholds. Four tests. to see if a difference is there. Ugh. Slow down. So in general, I'm gonna do the field. And then the p-value. <coughs> so most everything p-value. So if not on this list, the p-value is zero point zero five. Genetics, 0 0.0001, medicine, drug specifically, 0.0001. Um, Specifically, hydrology. So, genetics has a, gen a p value of 0 0.0001. Uh, drugs and medicine in general, but usually the drug aspect, will have a p value of 0 0.001. In ecology, specifically hydrology, will have a p value of about 0 0.1. 
So the reasons for, because it's got to be my rant, is genetics. If you're going to change the genetic code or trying to determine whether or not somebody has a, a cancer based off of a, a, a swab, you want to be very, very, very sure that it's true. If you are giving somebody drugs that have not only uh, some interesting side effects, but also could potentially kill you if you have certain conditions, you want to be very, very sure that that drug works the way it does. And for ecology, what ends up happening is you can't just up and create a new, for instance, lake to study. That's not how life works. Or I can't create new environments. So ecology tends to have a little less stringent tests because of that. Um, so what ends up happening I do all my tests, I get my result, and I will get a p-value. Sorry, I just got coffee ground. That was kind of nasty. So that p-value tells me how much I believe, so how many times out of 100 percent so i will have a difference i will not have a difference Ugh. why do my t's keep on dragging So in this case, we had, and I'll choose a p-value of 0.364. So I'm going to say we have a p-value equals 0 0.43. Well, linear correlation coefficient that is at least. What are they talking about? So I'm trying to make sure I answer this correctly, especially with the percentage. Probability of a linear correlation coefficient. Oh, really? So <clears throat> in general, if you have a high P value, you will, re uh, will not, reject a null hypothesis. So null hypothesis is which is eight, it's called H naught. So it's usually written. That's usually there is no difference. and whatever you're looking at. I'm so used to my computer moving slow that now I can't write because it's moving quick. So the one we're looking at is on linear correlation. So what it's looking at is so you have a line here and it's looking is, is this slope here zero? That's what it's looking at. Uh, and then you have an alternative hypothesis. Which is HA is Yes, a difference. So if this is that less, uh, not that, than 0 0.05, 
If it's less than 0 0.05, you go to the alternative hypothesis. If it's not, so this is no, this is yes. If it's not, you retain the null. And the textbook is not coming up in here to do the math. Oh, there it goes. So there would be, on this case, what it says there, um, yes, I agree. I'm trying to see what they want specifically with the math. Sorry. They just they sent you to the beginning of the chapter when you do this. Of course they do. Oh, that's like this getting R. Oh, the percentage that they're asking for is if you take that p value, which was in this case 0.43, the chance is equal to p times 100, which in our case is 43%. That's what I thought was the answer. I just didn't want to say something wrong. So I just decided to check on it. So whatever that P value is they give you, that's the chance it is. <clears throat> and since it's high, um, you don't, you would, uh, da, da, da. since that's high, uh, so there's not evidence to conclude the correlation between brain volume and IQ scores in males. Uh, and for those of you who have studied history, phrenology, which is what they're talking about, has long been debunked. So yes, your brain size does not indicate whether or not you're going to be smart. <clears throat> okay, is there any other questions on that? Or on the homework for today? So just a reminder, if you came in late and you didn't put your name in there, make sure you put your name in the chat before I save it um, so that I can get you for attendance. And if no one has any questions, which I'll give people like two, like a minute or two to think about it. Uh, if, if not, we can go ahead and uh, cut it for today and then I'll upload all the, the resources and all that. So reminder, this homework is due on the 19th. So we'll have two more class periods to go over this homework. Um, and as we do that, we can keep on doing it up. I do remember somebody was asking for study people. Let me just save this real quick. Um, so if that's something you'd be interested in, somebody had bug people in the class discussion. 
um, study groups are good. You get more perspective. Uh, if anything I can do to help with that, let me know. Um, I won't be creeping over you while you do it or anything like that. And once again, if you need any help, uh, bug me on Discord. As you can see through other people, I end up, I'm, even if I'm around the house, I'm usually, I have it on my phone and I can bug you. Uh, if not, that's pretty much what I have. Uh, let me go ahead and save this and you guys can run away. Have a good weekend.